Hello, Chen, Chen, Chen. All right, can you hear me? Cool, sounds very good. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, welcome all uh, for this uh, uh, event and this uh, concert in LinkedIn. Uh, myself, uh, Ravi Ayer and uh, Shweta here uh, on Violin are going to explore uh, aspects of uh, melody and rhythm. And uh, what a, it's not a coincidence uh, that, uh, that the place is called as Clay Spot. Right, and, and we have got an instrument that's pretty cool, uh, that's made up of clay. We'll delve a little bit more into that and, uh, and uh, what, what it takes to make that instrument and how it sounds and things like that. Uh, but to get started, maybe we can uh, start with a, 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 maybe a, a song and then um, we'll open it up for uh, more, more to come. All right?
this song was and uh, who was in? Sure. Um, so this song uh, is called Swami Nada Panipale Ashma. It's um, a song in the Raga Nande. So that was the scale that we played in. So that was.
because each one of these clay is made of a different composition and in fact is told that there's got certain metallic elements in it. And I'll come to some of the, uh, uh, the differences you can see in here. But the, the, the clay has got like five different metals in it. Uh, the copper, the brass, uh, the add a little bit of graphite and lead, lead for the, the stem, graphite for the stem, and also iron filings. Uh, uh, myth has it that some people say that they add these metals on the outside, but actually the from from what I have read, from what I have known from the elders, is that it ha it, it occurs naturally within that soil, and these these five elements are present in that. That's what gives the metallic ring tone. Oh. Um, so Manamadurai Madura is the place where the special type of gadam is made. Uh, the other place where it is made is uh, in Chennai or Madras. It is called as the Madras gadam. So I, I'll show you and you are more than welcome and free to come here and I'll, you know, we'll create maybe, maybe five minutes of our time for you guys to come and see and have a look at it either in the middle or in the end, the ghatams are here for you to see. Uh, maybe sometime, you know, maybe we can carve out some time for you to have a feel of the instrument as well. I'm more than happy to, for you to take a look at it. So that's the, the at, a, at a very high level to your question, Tell me something about the instrument. It's made from clay. The clay has got different um, uh, metals in it. The five metals that I told you, and there's a particular family in Manamadurai that makes this particular gatam is being passed on to generations. The other type is uh, the Madras gatam that is not as metallic, metallic and ringing in tone as this one. And you will see the difference uh, in some time after I open open this up for you to see. Kind of a please touch uh, museum for for the gatam for today. Um, and so we understand kind of the origin of it. What are what are some of the, the benefits or the drawbacks of this instrument? Uh, great question. Uh, one thing is the 
the amount of, of effort that is needed in order to get the tone out of the instrument, uh, I would say uh, is one of the, not a drawback, one of the considerations that one has to uh, take into account because basically something solid and strong that's not moving, does, does not have inertia and you have to hit your hand to get to produce the sound. Uh, unlike the other instruments that are maybe a little bit forgiving in terms of how much it impacts your hand uh, is, uh, is something that you can do. So that's one, is that the amount of effort and the toll it takes on your hand. Uh, the second is the fragility of this instrument. Because it is clay, it needs a lot of care. In fact, I do not have uh, the special case that I usually carry with it, but it's a fiberglass case uh, uh, with many different padding and bubble wraps that goes in there. Uh, so transportation definitely is uh, one uh, big drawback as well uh, in terms of that. Uh, the other thing that I can think of is um, with the other instrument there is a little bit of uh, leeway on how much tuning can be adjusted up and down. Whereas with Gatam that is not the case. Uh, you need to have a specific Shruti or um, pitch uh, in order to uh, get that sound. Uh, if someone is singing in a different pitch, I need to have a different gadam. So uh, it, it, it is not available in synthetic as well. Uh, so uh, some of the other instruments have started developing an instrument that are synthetic in nature but somewhat close to what you can hear and I can show you what I mean by a synthetic other other instruments. Um, so it is easy uh, for one to carry that instrument to um, uh, to change the pitch if it were not the, if it were not for garam. But if it is garam, you are limited and you need to have a good inventory of uh, you know space that uh, you have to you know carve out for the garam. Some some instrumentalists have more than 30, 40 garams, top professionals in their houses because each player each garam is different, each pitch is different. They need to adapt. Uh, to how a singer or a vocalist or an instrumental chooses that particular pitch. So I think that's what I would say. Maybe your two or three considerations and you know some of the flip sides of uh, you know this particular instrument. Yeah, um, and then speaking of some of the, the benefits of the instrument, it produces a very unique sound. Absolutely. Um, so it's interesting that um, for Gadam and even for Murdangam, I'll start with Gadam. There are basically four, five, maybe at the most six syllables that forms the basis. Isn't it amazing? And whatever you that produce is is from those five or six basic beats. It's uh, and I can show you a little bit and I can also give the instrument for some of you who may be interested to actually, you know, have a feel of what it sounds like and maybe maybe also learn a little bit of, you know, some of these basic techniques. So for the gutam, the, the basic fingering syllables are ta, okay, T-H-A, ta, D-H-I-D, Thom, T-H-O-M, and Nam, N-A-M. These are the main four beats. Uh, and then you combine these to form other beats. Let me show you how each one of these is played. The first is Tha. Using the first, uh, the three fingers, okay, on the left hand. If, if you are right handed, then you use the left hand for Tha. And take these three fingers and hit it together, Tha. Okay, D is on your right hand the same thing. Okay, and then play D. Okay, home is you use the back of your hand of your palm and then hit it in the neck. Okay, that's to. And nam for gatam you play it with the thumb. So basically it is. 
So if I play all the four together, ta, di, to, na, it will sound like this. Okay. All the other uh, syllables are derivatives of this. It's just like any language. Uh, you start with alphabet A, B, C, E, right? But when you put E and N together, it's not, it's N, right? And then you build words and then you build sentences. So with the same alphabet, so that's how it is. So you put D and the E and finger together, okay? Or num together, it becomes the key step, okay? So key I'll do a little bit of tongue twister for you guys uh, just in a bit. Okay, I should not have given away that is a tongue twister, but anyway, so you got what I'm gonna do. So so ta ki ta display in the garam like this. So what's D? D is nothing but this, right? So How do you play? I'll play both in this one and that. We'll come to that other instrument a little bit later. But the way that you play it, like this. Yeah. 
दिल पाता share with you some of the videos uh, of some of the great people uh, that actually traditionally play in the way that is do that gives a different tone of quality for that tone so, so please uh, when you get a chance please watch that um, so th that's one thing um, with regard to the uptake of this particular instrument and because of all the technological improvements that have come through that limitation of getting that tone sound is not that limited anymore that's one and second thing is uh, with the globalization and with the awareness and with the acceptance of everyone being given an opportunity to play that it is no longer i would say limited to uh, uh, men performing that as used to be the case uh, to give uh, a few examples that have been great uh, players uh, that have been um, uh, uh, that have made their names 
in, in the field of Gadam, for example, um, uh, a lady by the name of Sukanya Ram Gopal is a student of Vikku Vinayagram. I should get, come back to Vikku Vinayagram at some point in time because I'm pretty sure that you guys are, uh, you must have heard of his name. But uh, uh, that's one and the in the US itself that is a, a person by the name of uh, Samyukta Sridham for example who has taken this uh, instrument um, and started learning and they are performing very 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 well. Uh, in fact they are very innovative and very creative. So it is no longer uh, a, a stereotype type to associate this particular instrument to any particular gender I would say. And you know everyone is encouraged uh, because music is universal and uh, you know it gives a lot of peace uh, to whoever you know, just uh, spend some time along with it. So. Great. Um, could you say a little bit more about the famous Gautam artists and you know if you have any particular favorites? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. So how many here have listened to Gautam or some awareness? Okay, awesome. Sounds good. I see quite a few hands. How many of you have heard of uh, John McLaughlin, uh, the guitarist? Okay, so now I can put the two and two together. If you have heard of John McLaughlin, you should hear to their band called as Shakti. And if you have heard Shakti, the first original trio that formed this bass Shakti was John McLaughlin, uh, not trio, it was quartet actually. John McLaughlin on the uh, guitar, uh, El Shankar on the violin, uh, Vikhu Vinayakram on the gatam, and uh, Zakir Hussain, Mustafa Zakir Hussain on the tabla. And um, you know, you should just uh, YouTube, and uh, there are a few snippets and a documentary on the Shakti. In fact, they, uh, I think, completed or are going to embark on the 50 years of their uh, band uh, uh, of the Shakti troupe. <coughs> um, so he, Bhikkhu Vinayakaram. Uh, so why I'm saying this is, you know, one of my favorites is Bhikkhu Vinayakaram. Um, he is one of the pioneers in getting the Gatam to the world stage. Uh, his first foray into the United States and when he played, he popularized Gatam was when he played for uh, MS Subalakshmi in the UN concert. She was the, the you know, perhaps the first and the only person to have been given an opportunity in the UN concert, where she along with, uh, in the Mirdangam C.S. Murga Bhupati and uh, Violin V.V. Supramanyam, she, uh, she chose Vinayakram, Viku Vinayakram to be a part of the stage. So that was his first foray. And then based on his uh, playing, there were a few fusion um, artists who were interested to collaborate with him. And one such person was John McLaughlin. And rest was history after that. He's been performing. He's still there. There are a few old videos where you can actually see some of the uh, uh, the Jatis and some of the Korvais that they all put together, how they used to practice. It's a fascinating documentary, you should see that. Uh, so one of my favorites is Vikubi Naikaram. And of my recent ones, I would say Gatam Karthik is other one. Gatam Shuresh is uh, my third favorite, I would say. Uh, so if you want to listen at high quality Gatam playing, uh, these three will be, you know, uh, more than sufficient. Uh, any number of years will be, uh, uh, you know, will be small because it's ocean the way that they have played and made so much, uh, so many, so much contribution to this field. Thank you. Um, should we play a little bit more? Uh, sure. How about a song? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so there, there are 
different what we call ragas, different ragas in the song that are put together. Um, and
song um, also in that eight beat cycle. Um, so for this one to, to follow along, we'll do um, one, two, three, four, so that's your, just a clap, and then pinky, ring finger, middle finger. One, two, three, four, and then clap, back, back, back. Alright. Perfect. So one, two, three, four.
by the way, none of this is rehearsed. Just on the ground, just so that you know. Um, I guess that's a good moment to talk a little bit about kinetic music. Um, so that's the style of music that we're playing. A lot of it is improvised, and that's the that's the nature of the style of music. Um, so the, what we've played so far have been compositions that mostly were composed thousands of years ago, um, or many hundreds of years ago. Um, and so these compositions are um, are ones that I learned just in my childhood and you know through adulthood. Um, but they're they're not things that we have we have rehearsed together. Um, so the special the special thing about Carnatic music is that it's mostly learned by uh, by hearing. And so so oftentimes people have listened to this music through generations and generations, and so you kind of pick up on um, how the music is is to be sung or played or uh, whatever it is, and, and you learn it that way. Um, of course, you take lessons, and, and that helps too. But um, a lot of the, the way that we absorb the music comes just from listening um, to, to concerts of, of great musicians from the past or contemporary musicians now. Um, but we get a lot of that. Do you add anything about that? No, just that uh, it, 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 this, it has structure, but it allows for improvisation at the same time. I think that's the speciality of this thing. There is a little bit of, uh, uh, I would say, a little bit dramatization that can be achieved in Gatam. Uh, that's not possible through uh, instruments such as Murugangam and I'll uh, illustrate what that means is. In some of the concerts you would have, you would see, uh, if you are not already seen, is, you know, one uh, is able to take the Gatam and throw it in the air. Yeah, it requires a little bit of practice and it also requires a particular type of uh, uh, structured rhythm in order to do that. Because if it is all like continuous, then you cannot actually throw that karam. So Viku Vinayakram that I said, uh, if I recall it correct, let me see. There's a koroi that he has made. Koroi means it's a rhythmic pattern, it's played three times. And it goes like this, that gives an opportunity for the karam to be thrown. Uh, it's in an 8-beat cycle. I'll show it to you. I'll recite it once. I'll try to play it with the a lighter rhythm so that I can throw it a little bit in the air. Um, and the chord goes like this. So that's the structure. And see the, the gap which is there, ta, three, four, five, ta. It, it allows that gadam artist to actually put the gadam uh, and throw it in there. Let me try that and yeah. see if I can do that.
this piece will again be in the eight beat cycle, so if you want to follow along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Over and over again.
eight week cycle. So I started with uh, uh, setting up the rhythm, uh, uh, and uh, there is no right or wrong way to start a rhythm. In this case, it's just what whatever I feel like, and it, it should also be connected to uh, how the the wildness gave that segment to me. So it should be somewhat in that rhythm, and uh, I started with like din din taka 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 din was something like that, and then. I played a few improvised, a few um, fast rock like uh, just to build the tempo there. And then um, I played a korva in between. Korva is nothing but a repetition of uh, a rhythmic mathematic phrase, uh, usually played three times to get it from beat to the beat. And uh, uh, there is again no specific. Uh, you know uh, uh, structure for that one it does have one basic component is called it is made up of two parts one is called the purvangam or the prior part and uttarangam is the latter part the latter part is usually made up of like some kind of a, like a five six seven or in, in rhythmic patterns called studying in a tom studying in a tom studying in a tom so and the front part is usually some kind of a fast play, like the So in this case, I played And I ended by a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In this round. So that was the core I played. Um, the intro that I did was in a in a gate or a narai called as kandam uh, so basically and the way that i built into that was i went from chatusram to kandam basically a four or a eight to five so in this way din tangada vega dimita ka din tangada ka tadimita ka tadimita ka tadimita ka tadimita ka tadimita ka Nakata dimita dimi dinta dimiti taka dinata dimiti din tangrega dimita dinata dimiti taka din tangrega dimita taka din tangrega dimita taka din din tangrega dimita din tangrega dimita taka din so I went to a five from there and then I played uh, a little bit of chorus again in that five also um, and ended with a structured format you might wonder how the violinist exactly took that part where I left right so uh, our elders have made a structure in such a way that there is a fast phrase called as faram that play that means that we know that is coming to an end then we play a structured format called as uh, a mora it goes like dit tangada dakkar dakkar 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 dit tangada so that she knows in the third time whenever I end that, that's the place where she has to play. And then she starts the song wherever she left. So that completes the entire cycle. So um, again, uh, the tonal quality, you can see that's different. And uh, it's different because uh, do, you have, uh, do you have questions on the Pradangam or I can just talk about the differences. So the Gatam is a idiophonic instrument. It does not have any membranes. Whereas Pradangam is a membrane of phonic instrument so that means it's got membranes that vibrate that produces that sound so i think that's one main difference and i would say gadam is more primitive than this one because it does require some intellect and thinking so i don't think that this would have happened before uh, our instruments such as gadam because it has got different layers what i'm playing here is a totally synthetic instrument but the actual rhythm is made up of a wood in as of the middle and it has got different uh, leathers and skins uh, that are used like uh, the goat skin, the cow skin, the buffalo skin but here it's totally synthetic. The sound quality is not exactly the same but hey you know what with all this weather and transportation this becomes a little bit easier on me. Maintenance is a little bit easier on me as well. So that's a little bit about the, the, the instrument. The fingering techniques are still, the syllables are the same. Ta, di, to, nam but you can see that it produces different sound. Then in addition there are two uh, uh, together is Kita, then is Taka, it's not Tari, and then the two 
most uh, difficult uh, sounds to produce in the Bhardangam are the din and the chapu. It requires years and years of practice and this is how it sounds.
part with um, My Dream Vajitha, which is a, a composition, actually Ravi had mentioned this concert at the United Nations where the Gato first came onto the world stage. Um, so this was one of the songs that was also sung in that concert, um, where it, it was, it's just a prayer for world peace. concerts, uh, a violinist, a vocalist, or a vena player, uh, if they are the main uh, concert uh, uh, in individual, the first main accompaniment for a vocalist, for example, is violinist always, and then percussion is always the mridanga. The gatam is called as upa pakavadya. Upa means next to the main pakavadya. Likewise, the the, the jaw sharp, I would, I would call that a jaw sharp because you use the jaws for that. I do not know what the history is. But that's called as morsing. That is also a upa pakkavadya. So that means in addition to the gatam, one can add an instrument called as morsing. They can add an instrument called as kanjira. So the common upa pakkavadyams are gatam, morsing, and kanjira. Again, in no order of preference, the Upapakvatyam could be any or either or. But the Mridangam usually is the main one because of the membrane of phonic and the different tonal qualities that it can get and add to the comfort level of the music. So that's why. Yes? Does the heat uh, and the cold and other conditions change anything about um, the Mridangam? Or is that a pretty standard, very idiomatic version? <laughs> <laughs> Idiophonic. Idiophonic. <laughs> Gatam to much extent is, 
and not as impacted by the weather. Having said that, uh, because it contains obviously the heat expands and contracts and it gives a little bit, but it won't vary as much because it cannot expand or contract as much yeah. as the membranophonic instruments do. So that's why it is relatively stable and can withstand uh, weather fluctuations more so than Mardanga Mortabu. And this will pop on this same question at this. Um, so are there different uh, music that you play with the Madurai versus Chennai? Um, with the what? Ma, with, with, ma, oh, with the Mana Madurai or Gatam? Yeah. It's just easy to get the sound out of the Madras Gatam. Okay. It's just easy, a little bit easier to get the sound from a Madras Gatam oh, okay. yeah. compared to the Mana Madurai Gatam. Okay. And you can see that actually you can walk over and see how much effort it takes to get the same sound out from the two different Gatams. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the relationship between composition and improvisation, and I'll try to make it not too complicated. You talked about this a little bit when when you talked about how, how she knew to come in at the end of your, your solo. So you are connected by the tala, the rhythm cycles, but there's also these moments where you're connected by something else, it seems like, where you do something together that doesn't seem entirely improvised where you, you play certain rhythms in, in sync together or you come together in a way that seems really powerful. Is that an aspect of the composition that you have internalized? Um, or what's going on there that you Was that in, like, when, when I was doing the, the, the improvisation after the song? In, in all the pieces, in all the pieces. I, I feel. Like um, I think it's kind of to what I said earlier about Carnatic Musun being something that we learn by listening. And so a lot of the, the patterns are, are you know, it, it's improvisation in the sense that I wasn't planning to play it, but it, it's really deeply steeped in there somewhere. Um, so there's definitely some patterns that just come out because we've heard it a million times and so it just comes naturally. Um, but how do you know to do that at the same time? That's what it seemed like, is that you just kind of land there magically and you're both doing it together. So those are structure. So yeah, that's, that's why I mean. those are like, yeah, set format, otherwise, uh, one will not be able to kind of uh, start and uh, at the same time, right? Especially for the ending part, that's what will, I would say the most structured part is what I would say. All the other parts like improvs within what I play, within what she plays, but it's just the place where both of them connect and start the same place. That's kind of written. Again, there are so many different ways that you can do that. There are different moras patterns, different mora patterns. For example, but it will follow two, two, one, and and then a chord way. The chord way is played thrice. That's what is the cue. So that is structured. But what you play within that, that's improve again. The number of times you play that one gives the cue. If that helps answer your question. Yeah, that comes with practice and that has a little bit of math involved in it as well. So when I said the change of gate is for example that you change the tempo but it is within the 8 beat cycle. How much time do we have? Uh, we have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. If you want to fit that 1, 2, 3, 4 in the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. The underlying wave undercurrent is 1, 2, 3, but I'm playing 1, 2, 3, 4 in a 1, 2, 3. So that's what gives the tension the whole. Same way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, So if you see that 1, 2, 3, 4 occupies 5 times because you are playing a 5 beat cycle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's why 5, 4 is 20 or 4, 5 is 20. 
that gives the undercurrent of the pole. A little bit of math involved there and then you, it is what I told is just the basic and then you improve within that basic fields. Any other questions? Now, hope you have been motivated. Maybe some of you will take this instrument as uh, you know a learning hobby, or at least you know feel like listening more to this. Hopefully, this provide you you a venue and some some information to start listening to you. Wait, what was the name of the uh, larger instrument? Uh, what's that? The larger instrument. It's called as the Mridangam. Uh, I was curious about what makes the resonance, the one you're saying is really hard to get out of, but it sounds almost like a buzz. Do you know physicists have done dissertation papers on that topic? <laughs> it's, it's, it is a mystery, I must say that. Especially the way that the the black is overlaid on top of this three layers and there is switches in there, basically sticks. How that, I'm always amazed, that's a great question, I don't know how they got that. But that's but magic. That's three magical. layers, you said? That's three layers. Okay. Yeah. So even in this one, you can see they try to imitate that one, then the second layer is below, and there's one more layer below. Okay. That's just cool sound. But you're able to tune it with the, uh, the underlying. Yeah, yeah. That, is that, each, that each have the same size on that? Uh, no, good question. So, both, uh, for the, both the instruments, the size varies depending on the pitch. The higher the pitch, the smaller the size. Five, this is a one. Right. Lower pitch. Also different sizes. Oh, okay. So, so each, it's each head on the redundant. Same? Uh, uh, oh no. One is 18 inches oh, and the okay. one is approximately that on the two. I think it's 20 inches or so. Uh, the higher the pitch, the smaller oh, the size. Yeah. Likewise. There are usually three different sizes in terms of the length. And this one is also three different sizes, depending on whether it is low, medium, or high. Yeah? I have a question about the clay instruments. Whether they're thrown on a wheel, or are they cast in a mold? I wish I could uh, share a documentary with you. It's the making of a gutam. It, there is a difference between how you mold a clay pot and gutam. The main difference being uh, uh, the size and the thickness is very precise and the amount of heat that is applied is almost like 250 Fahrenheit. It's almost like, I think it's 50 or 100 times more than a normal clay uh, uh, furnace, yeah. And it is difficult to get that. Usually it says that if a gutter uh, manufacturer makes 100, usually it's like maybe 20 or 40 come out. Yeah. Right. Because all the sides, it has to be the same pitch. It, it has to be used for a concert. And not every every gutter that's made comes to that uh, consistency. So people do throw away after they make it. But it's hard or it's whether it's thrown, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they put it back or not. Probably not because once it's baked, it's uh, chemistry changes. So it's not a raw clay anymore. It has been processed. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I don't know. But that's a good question. I don't know. I think she's asking like, how is it actually shaped? To, like, do they use the pottery wheel or is it? Yes, it's it's a, it's a pottery wheel, just like a clay pot. Uh, yeah. Uh, and they put yeah. that clay in there, they yeah. take their hands and mold it to that. And then after they dry it, there is also a wooden plank that they use to, yeah, to pat it and make it to a shape. A lot of process involved. Just Google uh, making ghatam. Yeah. You have the ghatam making in YouTube. There's a 9 minute 30 second video. It's very, very important. That's <laughs> 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 Any other questions? <laughs>